Good day, Kaviba, and welcome to our Learn at Home Facebook Live. For the discussion today, the topic will be on how to level up strategies in teaching. Before we begin, take note of the following reminders. Make sure you are registered to the webinar to have your e-certificate of participation. Visit certificate.vibagroup.com to generate your proof of attendance. Share the video using hashtag LearnAs1PH as our official hashtag to all our Vibal webinars. Experience learning, Kavibal! And now, to proceed with our webinar this evening, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our distinguished speaker today. Kim Durla is a graduate of Bachelor of Secondary Education, major in English in the, in the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. She takes up Master of Arts major in Malikaing Pagsulat in University of the Philippines, Diliman. Currently, she teaches English Communication Arts in St. Paul College Passing Grade School Department. She has conducted workshops about creative writing, news writing, and feature writing in various public and private schools in Metro Manila. She also dedicates her time in serving at their church in Taytay Rizal. In her spare time, she maintains her blog www.kimderla.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Miss Kim Derla. Hi everyone, I am Kim Kimberly Derla from St. Paul College, Pasig, and tonight I am so excited to share with you my thoughts and ideas about the topic, how to level up your teaching strategies. Enjoy watching!
Magandang gabi po. Magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Ako si Kim Derla and welcome to another webinar brought to you by Vibal. Our topic for tonight is how to level up strategies in teaching. I personally came up with this idea because um, a year, a school year has passed. Uh, natapos na ang isang taon ng online distance learning. Uh, ang dami nang nangyari nung nakaraang school year. And to think na kailangan na naman siyang gawin, uh, pinagnilayan ko kung paano ko nga ba uh, mapagkakasya ang limitadong espasyo sa pagtuturo online. Ano pa yung mga pwede kong gawin uh, sa aking online or virtual classroom para masigurado na lahat ng bata ay magkaroon ng pagkatuto sa abot ng aking makakaya. So again, our topic for today is how to level up our strategies in teaching. So again, this um, webinar is uh, highly recommended for those teachers who are teaching online synchronous classes. So our objectives are the following. First, we will assess and try to improve the strategies that we already have. These strategies are already existing. Also, later on, I will introduce new strategies that would enhance one's online distance uh, teaching. And later on, I will be sharing with you some styles on how to teach using out-of-the-box um, concepts uh, or information. So let us now have a flashback Friday. Since today is Friday, let's uh, look back about um, the things na nangyari in the past. So before, uh, when we come up with uh, different teaching strategies, we consider the students that we have face-to-face. -face. So we have a lot of strategies that we utilized before. We did a lot of materials. No, we created a lot of instructional materials that we uh, think that would help our students. So that was before. So right now, when we come up with different teaching strategies, we have to consider the mode on how are we going to give it. So online distance learning. So ano kaya yung mga teaching strategies na pwede pa nating gamitin sa online distance learning? Ngayon po, I'm not saying na yung mga teaching strategies na nagamit na before uh, won't be applicable uh, right now, the moment, no? Kasi, work at online distance learning ba? Hindi na natin pwedeng gamitin ng lecture. Work at online distance learning ba? Hindi na posible yung mga groupings. Uh, diba? Sa online distance naman po, merong breakout sessions. So, let's try to um, meet halfway. So, hello face-to-face -face teaching strategies and hello online distance learning teaching strategies. So before we um, enumerate or list all of the strategies or the most commonly used strategies, I will share with you uh, three steps to improve your teaching. So I believe we are already doing this. It's just that sometimes we just have to review it because our brain loves repetition. So let's start. So first step in improving your teaching is to encourage active and practical learning. So ngayon po, habang nakikinig kayo ng webinar na ito, um, if your school year has already started or if it's about to start, what are the activities that you could uh, use to encourage active and practical learning? If we're teaching communication, if we're teaching a language, uh, how will that language be practical sa buhay ng ating mga students? If we're teaching math, how could we um, bridge the gap uh, between mathematics and practical learning. So, kayang-kaya po natin yan. So, to improve our teaching, um, if nandito na tayo, kayanin pa natin umangat. So, how do we do that? By active and practical learning. So, when we say active learning, it's the total opposite of yung panay-absorb lang ang student ng information. So, we let them us uh, share their knowledge, we let them explore their ideas, we let them create. No, That is one way of encouraging them to be active in their learning. And lastly, uh, lastly, last na agad, practical teaching. So when we say practical, uh, practical learning, 
um, let's remind them na ano yung pwede yung gamitin sa mga natutunan nyo na to in real life. So that's the first step. The second step is, grabe, ang cute ng kulay, provide for meaningful teacher-student interactions. So dahil nga sa pandemya, nalilimitahan ang interaction ng teacher and student. Pero dahil din sa teknolohiya, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng 24, ora, 24 oras na pagkakataon para makipag-usap sa mga estudyante natin, fellow teachers. So when we interact with them, let's not interact kasi kailangan. Let's give them meaningful interactions. So I think I would agree with you that if you do not reply to your students because they're asking the questions that you have already answered, okay yun. Kasi if we spoon feed everything to them, it's not gonna be meaningful. So yeah. Also, to save our time and to save our energy, when we reply or when we communicate to our students or to other stakeholders, we should also consider meaningful to teacher-student interaction. So yan. Um, para makasave tayo ng oras, ng lakas, replyan lang natin or mag-interact lang tayo pag talagang kailangan. And the third step to improve our teaching is make our syllabus or course expectations clear and it must be based on learning outcomes. Therefore, if we already determine what are the learning outcomes that we would like them to learn or to achieve, then all of our course expectations, all, all of our objectives in our lesson plan must be there or must geared must be geared towards to your certain learning outcomes so these three i am sharing this with you so the source is there i'm sharing this with you para lang um let's go back to why we've started so whether you are a young teacher or a senior teacher i think it's important that we always value we always um appreciate what's the essential what's the most basic so that when we know, when we have a grasp of what's the basic, then it would be easier for us to improve what we already have. Now, let's go on to our main topic for tonight. What are the commonly used strategies? So shout out to a fellow teacher ko na recently we, are, we had a conversation na uh, we, are using, we observed that we are using the same strategies. So while I am conversing with her, I realized na, oh, I think we could still use, we could still utilize that strategy. It's just that we just have to level it up. So I have here five strategies and I have here five suggestions on how to make it more active and how to make it more practical. So I hope this would help you. So first is picture prompt. Um, uh, before, uh, nung face-to-face -face pa, lagging my, oh, look at the picture. Look at the picture uh, ano, on the Manila paper or on the screen or on the TV. Uh, what can you say about it? What can you observe? Blah, blah, blah. So it's not bad, okay? Kasi it's the start of um, uh, sinisimulat ni ini-improve natin yung an analysis skills nila by merely looking at the picture, no? But it's just that if some students notice that uh, you are using the same strategy, I think that's the time na we question na what else can we do about picture prompt? Sige po. So especially, di po ba, may motivation, may energizer, ganon. So what can we do from uh, out of this strategy? So ang suggestion ko dyan is, what's next? So it's still, meron pa rin siyang picture. It's just that marami na siyang series of pictures to analyze. And also, as we provide them pictures, we also give them um, uh, a technique or philosophy maybe or a certain um, reference on uh, where can they uh, where can they compare this picture? So say for example, um, let us give them series of picture to analyze. Then let's ask from them, ano dapat yung next? Tapos instead na usual, di ba sa picture prompt, pangbibigay lang sila ng word na answer and all. So sa what's next sa uh, picture prompt level 2, wow level 2, uh, ito na yung time na sila na yung magbibigay ng picture. Okay, so baliktad na siya. Hindi man totally baliktad, pero you uh, giving pictures, then them, uh, the students providing other pictures related to what you have given. So hindi siya passive lang. It's more on active kasi they would search for um, 
or picture related to what you have presented. So that's number one. Next, number two. Ito, um, aaminin ko na. Ito yung pinakagamit kong uh, strategy. So kung napanood nyo yung Vibal talk ko before, ito yung sinasabi ko na laging gamitin, ganun. Kapag nag-e-elicit, nagsusulisit tayo ng ano, answer from the students, ganyan-ganyan. Pero I realize na masyado na siyang uh, gamit. So, anong gagawin natin? So, let's uh, try to utilize or introduce the letter signs. So, my teacher, uh, my fellow teacher used this in her class. And then, aside from that, some of the um, students are already interested. Alam na, alam niyo po ba yung bata tayo nung kinakabasado natin? A, B, C, ganyan. So, instead of the usual thumbs up or thumbs down, let's ins- encourage them na, siyempre, ituro muna natin kung T, T or F, ituro muna natin, true, true or false, paano siya gawin. Tapos, during our online synchronous classes, maybe we can apply it to them. So, para lang ano, at the same time, they would appreciate a different way of saying their answer. Okay, that's number two. Number three, ito. Uh, kahit sa face-to-face, nagagamit na natin ito eh. Kasi if, uh, ang tagal lang nakaupo ng mga bata, kaya merang sa gantong strategy na stand up and be counted. So ngayon, pwede natin siyang i-level up na. Bukod sa pagtayo, maybe itaas ang kilay, diba? i-flip yung hair. Uh, let us involve their bodies when it comes to showing their responses. Or if we are teaching uh, the younger kids, let us try to play with colors as well. For example, I have this game called Color Game. So all I just saw it online. So if they need, uh, ito yung ginagawa namin pag nakikita kong tulog na sila. So, sasabihin ko, okay, let's play color game, ganyan. Look for something that is blue and touch it with your hand. So, blue hand. So, para gawin nila yun, sasabihin ko dapat blue hand. So, for example, meron silang water bottle na blue, blue hand, ganun. Pang pagising lang. So, bukod sa stand up and be counted, gumagalaw din yung ibang katawa nila. So, what else? Uh, let's say, uh, black cheeks. So, maghanap sila ng something black, tapos lalapit nila yung cheeks doon. So, that is another way of Uh, eliciting answers from our students. So again, that is the third one. Now, next is the KWL. Okay, I'm not saying po na this is ano na, archaic or very luma, pero it's very essential. Sobrang totoo po to. Pero to make it uh, more interesting, how about we ask them, our, how about we ask our students the following? What do they want us to know? What they would like to learn? And ano yung gusto nilang pakinggan? So parang halos same lang din, pero ni-restructure lang natin yung question or yung meaning. So next, eto emojis. Uh, again, in my previous uh, webinar in Vibal, I've shared na uh, I would always ask them to send emojis just to let them know how are they feeling. But uh, recently, I've come up with this strategy, real-life emojis. I always use this in teaching my uh, younger students. So instead of sending um, emojis, I would ask them to be the real uh, emoji. No, So example, if they're feeling sad, can they exaggerate a sad emoji using their facial expressions? Something like that. Also, it saves time because they don't need to type As long as their camera is turned on, no? So, ang downside dito, what if nakapatay, naka-off yung cam nila? So, siguro, that's the time that they will use the chat box. So, it, either way, th- this could be of use. So, yun yung first part natin. So, again, um, ito lang ay isang, uh, paano ba natin siya sabihin? Um, isa lang siyang uh, example kung paano natin iisipan ng iba't ibang way Uh, para magamit yung mga sumusunod na te- teaching strategy. So how about the others po? Uh, for those who are watching right now, what are the teaching strategies na um, ginagamit nyo, na even face-to-face ginagamit nyo, tapos uh, pinaganda nyo lang, lalo, pinaganda nyo pa lalo this pandemic or this online class? Could you please comment them in the chat box? Uh, why? Why do I encourage you to do that? So that the other teachers who are currently watching right now could Um, get an idea. Also, if you get to um, 
Tapos ganito po, teachers, let's create a nurturing environment. Kasi uh, Vibal webinars are not intended for you to sit there and all. Pero it's a community. It's a community of uh, teachers who are willing to learn and to share. So I hope uh, you could also share some strategies that you are doing. Briefly describe what is it po and leave them in the chat box. And kayo naman po, um, kung meron kayong uh, strategy ng uh, random commentary here tapos nagamit nyo, please comment there. Um, let's ano, let's uh, build a culture of uh, ganyan. Yung ano, masaya tayong natututo. Ganun po. So sana nagko-comment na po kayo no, habang nakikinig sa mga susunod pang slides. So ngayon po, uh, here are some strategies uh, na ginagamit ko and hopefully sana po maka Tulong rin po sa inyo. So, ito po. The first uh, way of uh, my... The first... Uh, <laughs> ang unang strategy ko is to integrate creative writing in teaching. So, how, we, how do we integrate creative writing in teaching? So, I have here some examples. If you're teaching science po, and if, you, if, and if you'd like to assess um, their knowledge about a scientific discovery that you've recently taught them, I think it would be great if we will ask them to retell a certain scientific discovery through a story, through a short story. This could be partnered with their English class because in all English classes, there would be uh, they will be learning the elements of short story. So I think it would be fun if we also try to um, make our assessments or creative. Next is, uh, for example, math. Uh, we will ask them to provide a scenario creatively by introducing math concepts. So say, for example, they will be giving a problem that needs to be solved, but it has to be written creatively. So para lang po may bago, para din may twist. And say, for example, sa arts naman, or even sa PE and health, so we can create we can ask them to create poems, short stories, or short slogans na pwedeng um, ma-assess kung ano yung learning nila on a given topic. And then po, um, when it comes to integrating poems to art concepts or to music, uh, PE health concepts, I think it would be helpful na we also put them together kasi hindi naman siya nahihiwalay. All right. All right, so next is the use of games. Aside from trying to connect to the games that they are currently playing, I think it's also important that we introduce new games to them. So that is the challenge for you, po, teachers. Uh, research about uh, the trending topics or, or the games that students are into. Next is upgraded assessments. So when we say upgraded assessment, uh, Ang goal natin dito, dito is to create an assessment that is uh, encompassing. Uh, this assessment would um, uh, makukuha niya yung learning ng student. And at the same time, it won't be that difficult and time-consuming for us to assess it. Kasi when we see their answers, we know that they finally understood our lesson. So upgraded assessment refers to the assessments which are delivered in a more fun and creative manner. And of course, hindi lang fun and creative, it should be easier for us to assess and to check. And next is the mini teacher of the day. So in a class, we could also encourage one student to try to, to pretend to or to act like a mini, like a mini teacher, like just like you po. Because if they would uh, try to be the one who is leading the class, I think they would be able to share or display their knowledge. They would share their knowledge that what they know and they can easily share it with their classmates. So parang ano, ST, pero for a day lang. I think this is applicable in all subjects, no? Like you're there, you're really teaching there, but it's just that you'll pretend that there is a mini teacher who's currently teaching with you or working with you. So it could be an assignment po. Next is the use of technology. So I have mentioned games earlier. Right now, I'm uh, encouraging everybody to, ano pa, to explore more of technology. There are lots of educational videos that we could uh, see online. We could even allow them to play free math and science games, games, games virtually. So I hope we could also consider using those stuff. 
And last po, um, kanina, uh, I presented with you po the um, basic or the essential uh, strategies. Then after that, uh, I shared with you how to make it better. And then after that, I introduced new concepts with you. Uh, now po, here's the challenge po. How do you think out of the box? Okay. After stepping on what's the ba after stepping on the basic, after improving what's existing. Now, teachers, it's time for us to finally think out of the box. So li literally, when we think out of the box, yung wala sa ano, wala sa usual nating ginagawa, wala sa usual na ginagawa natin ngayon sa mga monitor natin, wala siya sa usual na tinitingnan natin sa cellphone, sa gadget, sa devices and all. Ano pa yung hindi niyo nagagawa? Baka pwede na siyang gawin ngayon. Ano pa yung ginagawa nyo na na mas kailangan pang pagtuunan ng pansin? Baka mas kailangan pa natin ulitin siya and enhance later on. So why do we need to think out of the box? Uh, but before that, let me share that. Uh, let's do something that we haven't tried before. So in my case, uh, to do that, I just look at my room. Tapos whatever is here, I just randomly pick it up. Uh, for example, I have here books, and then I open random pages, and then, and then I, got, I try to get ideas from that. What else? And then, minsan from the students, I give I give them a certain prompt, and from that prompt, dun kami nagsisimula ng discussion and ng lesson. And what else? Kunyari, meron ako ditong uh, box talaga, uh, I ask them to think. Parang... Um, kunin natin yung mga ideas na naubusan na tayo sa mga students. Kasi at the end, bukod sa matututunan nila sa atin, for sure, marami po tayo rin na matututunan sa kanila. So I think um, it's a good way of interactive learning and meaningful interaction. So next is experiment with mixed strategies and technology. So with the limited time that we have to teach online, I think it's really challenging to mix strategies and technology. But no matter how difficult it is, it is still possible po. So for example, in my case po, um, if I am teaching my, um, yung mas matatanda kong students, um, first I set the intentions, what are we learning today? Next is, why are we learning this? Next is the practical learning outcomes na, uh, what can you get out of this? Will this help you after school? And then, before I teach uh, my class, sinasabi ko sa kanila na, um, uh, you're not learning this just because you are a student or you're part of the academy or institution. You're learning this because this is uh, one of the lifelong learning na maaring dalhin nyo in the near future. So the adjectives that we learn inside the school, the sentences that we write, the short stories that we create, it's not just about the academics. It's all, it could also be used after college once we are working. And yan po yung uh, lifelong learning na um, sinishare ko with my students. So I do that by mixing the strategies that I did before and the technology that I have now. So um, last school year, I handled creative writing students. And nung face-to-face, -face, um, talagang challenging na ang magturo ng creative writing. Pero masaya po. Masaya naman po. So ang culminating activity namin is to produce a physical copy of a book. So ngayong um, pandemic, uh, stricter yung budget kasi um, pandemic, eh, ba? Ang goal natin is to... Uh, to to purchase what is essential. Now, anong gagawin ko ngayon? Yung tanong ko sa sarili ko, um, anong gagawin ko ngayon na pandemic, tapos creative writing, wala na yung physical copy ng book namin, what can I do out of that? So ngayon, nag-search ako sa YouTube and all, then I see a lot of uh, writers reading their poems. So nagpa-poetry, ano kami, poetry day, and then I ask them to record a video of themselves reading the, ano, reading their works. Sobrang ganda ng kinalabasan. It's usually out of my expectations. Kaya po talaga na it's true that when we um, elicit uh, activities from the students, some really stands out, stand out. And also ngayon, after the poetry reading, I ask them to um, like, uh, I gathered their best works and I put them together into a compilation and we turned it into an ebook. So yun po. So through Canva, naka-layout kami ng ebook 
And ako lang din yung gumawa nun kasi para lang may uniformity. And after uh, our last day, I, dis- I distributed a copy of the ebook to their email and also I shared uh, the file where their, ke- where, uh, their parents could easily access the ebook. So yeah, um, it's uh, less expensive. It's really cheap. We didn't spend a um, uh, single cent in producing an ebook. They just recorded themselves and through connections, we were able to produce a compilation of the videos of their poetry, poems. And also, um, when we step out of the box, we think when we think out of the box, step, step up, not only for ourselves, for the sake, for the sake na, ay gagawin ko to kasi gusto ko uh, ma-impress sila. Gusto ko lang, it's, I'm doing this for myself. Gusto ko lang maging maganda yung katak- kalabasan ng pagtuturo ko. Pero when we uh, think out of the box, let's all, let's really do it for our students. I know po, it's uh, really challenging to teach these days. Um, first year of pandemic has been very difficult. And the second year is more difficult than the first. So I hope you are all still doing well, fellow teachers. And before we produce uh, these outcomes, I hope you find time to rest. Diba nga yung Tagalog ng rest is pahinga. Let's find time to breathe. Huminga muna tayo. I know uh, what I'm sharing with you could be overwhelming, but let us uh, never let a day pass without loving yourself, without allowing yourself to rest. Because I think if we show love and concern to ourselves, that's the time that we could be of great help pa to our students. So again, um, I hope we were able to achieve our um, objectives for today. So ito po ay, kung mapapansin nyo, th- uh, one slide lang, yung thinking out of the box thing. Uh, the thinking out of the box task, uh, I I will leave them to you po. It's up to you po. What else are the strategies that I could use? Ano pa yung hindi nyo nagagawa? Ano pa yung gusto nyo gawin pero takot lang kayong gawin? Maybe this webinar is already assigned na dapat gawin mo na siya. So again, so tonight we were able to compare and contrast the different strategies before and we I have uh, suggested different ways on how to improve it. So again, I am Kim Derla. So I hope you had a great time listening to my simple sharing about leveling up your teaching strategies. Uh, again, you if you like my uh, sharing about this topic, you could like my Facebook page, Kim Derla or fb.com slash wonders of Kim. Or you can simply read more about my thoughts as a teacher, writer, and author at kimderla.com. So again, let's cultivate an environment of nurturing, loving, and empathic teachers. That would be all for tonight. Thank you po and have a great day. There we have it. In behalf of Ibal Group Incorporated, I would like to thank our speaker for today for this indeed very insightful learning session. It is an honor to have you with us today, ma'am. And to all our Kavibal viewers, all thanks to you for your continuous patronage to all our daily learning session. Don't forget to register to get your e-certificate of participation. The link is in the caption of this webinar. Also, we encourage you to subscribe and watch on our official Viva Facebook and YouTube channel. Muli, maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Happy weekend, mga kabibal!